Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're taking a look at reflection off of mirrors. Now this picture here shows a plain mirror, which means a flat mirror, and it shows light rays bouncing off of that mirror following the rules of reflection. So we have a couple learning goals today. The first to describe the laws of reflection, and the second to calculate the angle of reflection when given the angle of incidence. So we'll start off with just a little bit of terminology. If this is a mirror here, the side that's smooth is the reflective side where you would stand to look at yourself. And then the side with the little hatch marks is the opaque side. If you looked at that side, you wouldn't be able to see yourself at all. The next part is the normal. This is something that's imaginary. So you don't normally have um, straight lines pointing out of the mirror straight at you. This is something that's imaginary. It's a line that's perpendicular to the mirror, which means it's at 90 degrees to the mirror. We draw this to help us calculate angles, but it does not actually exist. So that's our normal. The light ray that comes in towards the mirror is called the incident ray. And the angle between the incident ray and the normal is the angle of incidence. And we use theta subscript i to represent that. Now, be careful. The measurement is always between the, the incident ray and the normal, not between the incident ray and the mirror. We always measure next to the normal. The ray that comes off of the mirror is the reflected ray. And it has an angle of reflection, again, measure between the reflected ray and the normal and that's represented by theta subscript r. So let's look, take a look at the laws of reflection. The first is that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So that will always be the case. If the angle of incidence is 10 degrees, angle of reflection will be 10 degrees as well. If it's 25 degrees, then the angle of reflection will be 25. So it's always equal to each other. And then second, the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal all lie in the same plane. So that means if the incident ray is coming in at an angle like this, the reflected ray will also come out at the same angle. It's not going to be shooting towards you. It's not going to be coming back towards me. It's going to be going in the same line, almost like you could draw it on a piece of paper. They're going to be in the same line. And then the last idea is just the difference between specular and diffuse reflection. Specular reflection shows all of the um, incident rays and the reflected rays parallel to each other. So this would happen when there's a smooth surface. When there is a bumpy surface, you end up with diffuse reflection, where the incident rays may come in, at, uh, par they may come in parallel to each other, but the reflected rays will end up coming out at different angles because the exact location where those incident rays hit the surface might be at slightly different angles. And because the laws of reflection say that the angle of incidence has to equal the angle of reflection, if the surface where they hit is at a slightly different angle, then the angles of reflection will have to be at different angles. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to describe the laws of reflection and you should be able to calculate the angle of reflection when given the angle of incidence. If you can do these things, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.